Sunday bulletin, you'll find the announcement sheet. Next Sunday is Sunday School Teacher Appreciation Brunch following the service. We have Pentecost Sunday on the 19th. And then Memorial Day, you'll see that the office will be closed. And I will hear more on all of you. I'll see you again next Sunday. <laughs> Okay. 
people in the northern Texas uh, through the North Louisiana area, which is our Sinai.
eternity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter, and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for God has for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. And when Eve beheld Eden's very rivers, the ark carried your creation to the flood and to a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the city in their freedom's land. In the desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you open the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here, here is, is our, our water, water of life. Hallelujah. Our opening hymn this morning is Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. We'll sing verse one. Three and five.
resurrection. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak and started with this road that came to, excuse me, started to speak. As they were going along this road, they began to, came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them came up out of the water. The spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus. And as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will be reading something that my mother wrote for me um, sometime after Easter, when I was a little kid. I asked her, what did they do with the cross? So she wrote this. That day, on Golgotha Hill, where our Lord was crucified, what did they do with the cross, upon which he fled and died? Did they just leave it standing, that emblem of suffering and shame? Or was it taken by thieves for possible monetary gain? Maybe the earth just swallowed it up when the quakes came over the land, burying it with the crown of thorns, and the nails from his precious hands. Perhaps it is buried beneath that mound, somewhere underneath the clay. Someday it may be found near where our Lord and Savior lay. Reminding how careless we have been, drifting further and further into sea. Commanding our presence before the tree. We call him again this great agony. Raymond, he died for you.
second reading is from 1 John, 4th chapter. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is part of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not what we loved God, but that we loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boundless on the day of judgment because boldness, I'm sorry, on the day of judgment because he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not reached the perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him in this house, those who love God, must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Where they draw strength, 
and flourish. This morning our gospel readings have taught us that those who bear fruit have a relationship with God and without Him, we can do nothing. We require, require the vine. Some branches pr produce fruit and are pruned, cared for, and nurtured. Some branches that do not produce fruit are removed. And we as Christians, we are productivity. We love to grow and flourish. It's built into us. That productivity is how we measure our standard and our successes. It is the basis of our economic system. We see this by those who do flourish. They are rewarded. Those who do not are often cast aside and forgotten. Careers and promotions are based on productivity, which is at the core of poverty, welfare, health care, and the elderly. They do not produce, and our care of them often reflects that. We are programmed to look for the fittest and help them survive. Whereas Jesus went to the weak, the heavy laden, the burdened, the poor, and brought them to the vine so that they too may flourish. And I wonder if we sometimes, in our own walk, reflect that, that with that Christ line, that drawing, bringing to the vine, to let others grow. This past week, while I was on vacation in the Western Korea, on Carnival Cruise Ship Jubilee, I use this time, like I mentioned earlier, to reflect on the opportunities and where I was at this moment and how God was speaking to me. I originally left quite down, and I still can get quite emotional about it. Because with the where we are at Sixty, being organized parish lay minister, uh, looking forward, you know, is God calling me? to go forward or continue flourishing right where I am. I planned this trip many months ago before even this came up with St. Stephen. Uh, and just prior to leaving, of course, the church went on the market and sold very quickly. Uh, we lost a valuable member of our congregation, Phil Wendell, and that really has been quite a a downfall. But I needed to get away and regroup, start to plan for the summer, and also prepare for those that I work with. You know, they could go and have their family time. So Justin had to have a little bit of cruising. That's my favorite vacation. I can get on the ship. Whether I ever get off in those seven days and walk out on the port makes no difference to me. To look out across the horizon and all I see is beautiful blue water. I'm reminded over and over again, God's creation is absolutely beautiful. And He draws us. And I find myself often how, as a Christian, how do others not see God's wonderful creation and know when you get up and you hear the birds sing, and of course I'm especially drawn to the red bird because I was taught at a very young age. A red bird is a sign of someone coming to visit. And uh, just God's wonderful creation. How can we shout from the rooftops? Uh, of course, one of my favorite things on the ship the ice cream. Everything. And I mean everything. You go to breakfast. Let's run and get an ice cream cone. You run, play bingo, you get an ice cream cone. You go to dinner. It just full as a tick. Let's run upstairs and get an ice cream cone. In fact, uh, one night, lights out. I'd already taken a nap. Woke up at 1130. 
and I need an ice cream. <laughs> so, of course, you know, wonderful food in the dining room, the island excursions, of course, uh, just fabulous. The first night, Dan and I were interested in a Seder service, which is the observance of the Passover. Now, I'm not Jewish, and 25 other people in the room were not there, too. But one of the crew's uh, people conducted this service. And what an honor, opportunity to participate in the observance of Passover. And I'm one of those that, when I go on vacation, it's so ingrained in me on Sunday mornings or Saturday evening, wherever the, however the vacation falls, I've got to go to church. I'm not going to get on a cruise ship if it leaves on Sunday until I go to church, whether it's the Presbyterian, the Catholic, the Baptist, whatever church is close to the port, I've got to go. You know, it's just that convicting to me. But anyway, it's beautiful. Beautiful, humbling service. And one of the ladies there, and I wish I could remember her name now, but it's left here, uh, who lives in Texas, is not Jewish, but she was talking with one of the people there, you know, the fact that as Christians and Jesus. And the Passover and the meaning, the resurrection, Easter. But you know, after the service was over, we were just visiting, and I happened to mention a prayer concern of mine at St. Stephen. And she and her husband and another lady who was just recently, I believe she said she came to Christ in 2009 at the age of 65 years of age. She had never been in the church growing up, never heard the name of Jesus, except in other ways beyond, uh, besides the way it's supposed to be used, in an unloving way. Uh, but anyway, she become a Christian. She went to the Holy Lands and was so moved as a young child to walk where Jesus walked to see where he preached and to see the place. She said, when I came to the rock and they told me that was Jesus' blood on that rock, she said, that moment I had to find, she said, I wanted to remember it. I had to find a tattoo artist who could remind me every day. So on her wrist, she had the word redeemed print, tattoo, and then under it, by, and the, in Aramaic, uh, Jesus Christ. And she shared that with me. And as I said, this couple prayed with me just immediately. They gathered around me. So it was that the vine was there on the Carnival Jubilee, out in the middle of the Gulf. Christ was there and had me growing on the branches. Um, of course, it reminds me of a story years ago when Mom and I cruised. You know, I always, you're supposed to put on nice clothes and go to church, you don't show up and cut off and all that. But my conviction of going to church, I'd forgotten to pack church clothes, knowing that we would be in New Orleans on Sunday morning. Went into the church, embarrassed my mother, dreadful. I remember the red and white striped shorts I had on, Capri shorts, had on a loud shirt and sunglasses because I couldn't find my record glasses. My mother walked in. I don't know this child. He drug me in here. But anyway, uh, it's just how can we not continue to grow? We sit that time. Daily in our world, we're drawn. Uh, anyway, her husband told me that he was someone who went to various churches and helped them in growing. And there was a Presbyterian church in there, I believe he said around Houston, 
that he had been working with for several months, and they seemed to be coming back and getting to thrive again. And he's called him a couple months later, and they closed. He said, what happened? She said, the person who started said, you had wonderful ideas. It was absolutely wonderful, but we only had a few who were willing to carry through. Everybody was so excited when you left. But then they scattered to the four winds afterwards. So we were left with just the chosen few, and we couldn't do it alone. Uh, as you notice, I have on two different necklaces today. Uh, in Costa Maya, I was walking around, and one of the shops, the Hallelujah Store, I was drawn to that thing. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful expression. And uh, right there in the, by the register was the Tree of Life, which fit so close. I was just taken that with the scripture readings this morning of the vine and the branches, and to walk in, and this is the first thing I see, was the, the tree of life. And that reassurance, four days into a cruise, that God was there. The vine was there, you know, reaching out, wanting that branch to grab on. And this cross I've had for a number of years, but I lost the chain and never, you know, I work in the biggest retailer in the world couldn't even remember passing from the pharmacy in front of the jewelry department that I needed a new chain. So I was competing with a, a lady who was looking at the same chain. I was like, I've got to have this for my cross again. Anyway, long story short, I was reminded over and over again throughout the cruise, people I met, that Jesus is the vine and he reaches out. He's got branches everywhere that flourish and draw us to you. How many of us have been told in our lives that only the fittest can make it to heaven? We're pruned. We continue to grow. We're not stagnant. At times, yeah, we do feel like, God, where are we? And I'm here all alone. But it's at those times he's pruning us to flourish and go forward. Those times allows our relationship. We grow deep. We begin to bud. The fruit comes forth. It's revealed in our living, our connections. It's a natural consequence. And it's long term. It's our friendships, our marriages, our communities, our partners, our friends. We do not choose how or where we abide to connect. And we all in our lives have lost touch with that special someone that we've said the words, I'll always stay in touch. We'll always be in touch with one another. And life somehow gets in the way. And we lose that contact. 10, 15 years later, we have a few minutes with that person. And how often do we pick up exactly where we left off? As if no time has passed. That's exactly how the body works for us. It's always, God is always present with us. Even in times when we feel like we're not flourishing, we're not growing. God's pruning us. And we do. There remains a connection. Whether, what distance there may be. Ask yourself these questions. What fruit am I producing? How much? Is it acceptable? That is what Jesus asked us to do. Look within ourselves and know that the vine is always our strength. We never stop growing. 
our life, our love, our goodness, our holiness flows through us because Christ loved us. He shed his blood so that he could draw us to him in a closer relationship. We live our lives as one, not just because of that relationship with Jesus, but because of the relationships with others. Love for Jesus and love for one another. We soon discover we are living one life, and the fruit of life is abundant, overflowing, and the Father is glorified. Amen. Our sermon hymn is one of my favorites. It's a childhood hymn. Jesus loves me, this I know. Because why? The Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me.
Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of the news. We pray for the church around the world, for all ministers, and for the mission of the gospel. Keep all the newly baptized and confirmed in your family. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us to abide in you always. God of grace. For the well-being of the earth and of all things, rivers, lakes, streams, estuaries, melting glaciers, polluted waters, renew the face of the earth and shower us with your goodness. God of grace. For the nations and all those in authority, local, state, and national leaders, for elected representatives at every level, for international organizations, that justice may reign, God of grace. For all those in need for any experience, experiencing homelessness or unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression or seeking asylum, and for all who are ill or suffering, we pray, especially for Parkway Band, who's traveling today after taking first place. For competition, for Adam, Helen, DeGraff, and Reed, who had cancer surgery last week and is doing well, as well as those listed in our bulletin.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our